This is Twit. We got problems. <laughs> you mean we, we, we didn't got before? Your, <laughs> we got your problems right here. Um, the guys that have been poking at cellular phone security for years yeah. are today, the 25th of February, 2020, during the NDSS, which is the Network Distributed System Security Symposium, <clears throat> which I guess should really be NDSSS, but perhaps they thought that that was one S too many. Uh, that's being held in San Diego right now. They're delivering their paper uh, disclosing their new attack on 4G LTE and unfortunately it also works against 5G because we haven't actually solved the problems. Um, okay, so uh, the there, there is in our cellular system a the same sort of hierarchy of of levels forming a network stack as we're used to having, for example, in our computers with TCIP, physical layer, uh, 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 transport layer, uh, the and the various their various protocol layers and so forth. Um, so to, even their abstract of their paper was just it, it required too much understanding. I, I, I read it and I thought, okay, well, I could, I could tackle explaining this, but I don't think we have enough time. But the, the introduction gives us a good sense for the importance of what they have found. So in the, in the intro to their paper, they explain long-term evolution, which is, of course, what the acronym LTE or the abbreviation LTE stands for, is the latest widely deployed mobile communication standard and is used by hundreds of millions of people worldwide. The protocol offers high-speed internet access and packet-based telephony services and has become an integral component of our daily communication. We fundamentally rely on the security of LTE for a variety of applications. The security goals of LTE include, amongst others, mutual authentication, traffic confidentiality, and location privacy. Any attack vector undermining these security aims has far-reaching implications to the use of LTE as a communication medium. In the context of mobile communication, mutual authentication is an important security aim since it ensures that both communication parties, the user equipment and the network, mutually verify their identities. That is, you know, we're sure we're communicating to, to the party we think we are and vice versa. As the wireless medium is accessible for everyone in the vicinity and identifiers can be easily forged, mutual authentication is essential for building trust between communication parties. The telecommunication providers rely on user authentication for accounting, authorization, and the association of data sessions to a, to a legal party. The latter case is of particular importance in prosecution. And in fact, this does, as we'll see, have some significant implications for defense attorneys. In which a possible offender is accused of committing a crime via a mobile internet connection. Additionally, users rely on network authentication for the confidentiality of their communication. One important example for missing network authentication is the second mobile network generation, GSM, Global System for Mobile Communications. By faking the identity of a legitimate network, an attacker can impersonate the network in GSM and eavesdrop on the communication of the victim. <clears throat> and of course, we we well know that that's the 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 the, fa the famous phenomenon that we see in Las Vegas uh, during the hacker conferences, where the number of apparent uh, cell towers jumps by a factor of ten overnight. And it's like, uh, wait a minute. Um, so they said, in contrast to earlier network generations like GSM, LTE establishes mutual authentication 
on layer three of the network stack using a provably secure authentication and key agreement, they, which is, has the authentication and key agreement is AKA protocol. Based on this protocol, subsequent encryption ensures the confidentiality of user and control data. They said permanent integrity protection, however, is only permanent integrity protection. That's the key that we have. On one hand, we have encryption, which gives us privacy. But remember that integrity is the second side of that. We need authentication. We need something. We need to know that that nothing has been changed, which is integrity protection. They said permanent integrity protection, however, is only applied to the control data. A recent study has revealed that missing integrity protection of the user plane on layer two allows the manipulation of user data in a deterministic way. Specifically, a layer two attacker in a man-in-the-middle position between the phone and the network can introduce undetectable bit flips due to malleable encryption and redirect traffic to another destination. While this attack demonstrates the potential consequences of traffic manipulation, it is solely limited to redirecting traffic to another destination. So that was, pr that was prior work upon which these guys based their next-gen attack. They said, in this work, we introduce a novel cross-layer attack concept that complements the known two-layer vulnerability, that is, the missing integrity protection on the user plane, with exploiting the default IP stack behavior of operating systems on layer three. And specifically, they target iOS and Android, both which are used to success to in su successful attacks. They said, we make use of the reflection mechanism of certain IP packets. And I'll cheat and just say that that's ICMB ping and ICMP uh, destination unreachable packets. They said, uh, exploiting the default behavior on these operating systems, we make use of the reflection mechanism of certain IP packets, which allows us to not only redirect user plane traffic, but also to create an encryption and decryption oracle that enables an adversary to perform a full impersonation of the phone or the network on the user plane, meaning to appear as the user to the network and to appear as the network to the user, thanks to decryption. We call this concept IMP4GT, which is impersonation in 4G networks, pronounced impact. Impact completely breaks the mutual authentication property for the user plane on layer three, as an attacker can send and receive arbitrary IP packets despite encryption. They, they, and I'll finish just by wrapping up this part. This attack, they say, has far-reaching consequences for providers and users. Providers can no longer assume that an IP connection actually originates from the user. Billing mechanisms can be triggered by an adversary causing the exhaustion of data limits and any access control or the provider's firewall can be bypassed. A potential impersonation also has consequences for legal prosecution as an attacker can establish arbitrary IP connections associated with the victim's identity. Okay, so I, I mentioned briefly, they mentioned this encryption decryption oracle. That's the key to this. They establish a man-in-the-middle interception using a software-defined radio, which are now widely available. They then enable uh, that they are then enabled to to probe the encryption by flipping bits, which results in a failure and a retransmission. So it it is seen as a as an over the air problem, not an attack, 
which causes the endpoint to retransmit. They inject ICMP unreachable and ICMP ping packets into the stream in order to get either endpoint to reply. And, and since we've talked about, especially in the early days of this podcast, a lot about encryption, uh, uh, they explain the encryption and the decryption oracle operation, and it's, it's understandable. They said, uh, uh, of the encryption oracle, the goal of an encryption oracle is to learn the key stream of a connection, which later allows us to in- encrypt and inject arbitrary packets. For encrypting a target plain text, the Oracle injects a known plain text into the system. The system encrypts the packet by XORing the known plain text with a valid key stream for transmission, which is returned to the Oracle. Uh. <laughs> okay, so what they just said was, I mean, it's so obvious. They take they they take a known plain text. I mean, it could be all zeros for for all anyone cares, but it probably needs to be, for example, an ICMP ping. They so they but they know what it is. They they inject that into the stream. The recipient encrypts it by XORing it with the key stream and returns it. Well, we know how to remove XORing, right? We re-XOR what we got back with the known plain text, and that gives us the key stream, which which is the the output of a stream cipher, which the the communications uses in order uh, as an XOR pad, essentially, in order to create an encryption, which is 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 solid as long as it's never reused. This so this is a means of of obtaining the the key stream from the cipher in a way that then allows the attacker to reuse it. They said now the oracle can extract the valid key stream by XORing the known plain text on the encrypted packet. Any arbitrary payload can now be encrypted by XORing the target plain text and the key stream, which has been determined. So basically that just that that bypasses the problem of this data being encrypted on that layer. They said of the decryption oracle, the goal of a decryption oracle is to decrypt and access the payload of an encrypted packet. To achieve the decryption of a packet, the oracle manipulates the to be decrypted ciphertext and sends it to the system. The system decrypts the packet and subsequently sends it back to the Oracle. In this way, and similar to encryption, we can receive the plain text of encrypted packets. So they go into far greater detail in their paper. Uh, I've got a link to it in the show notes for anyone who's interested. It's being delivered today, as I mentioned, in San Diego. But they've conclusively demonstrated a fundamental weakness not only we already had it in GSM, we knew it was a problem. We thought, oh, we fix this problem in 4G LTE, except we didn't. Nor is it fixed in the forthcoming 5G, since neither of these systems provides the needed message integrity protection at the user layer, which is where this exploit happens. Um, it must have been assumed by non cryptographer designers that the encryption running at the at the user layer would be sufficient to protect the user's communications. That is to say, they must have assumed that the encryption running at the at the users in the user's application layer would be sufficient. But it turns out there are available exploits. We know that XOR-based stream ciphers, while highly attractive due to their economy and the ease of implementation, are also highly susceptible to interception attacks that can trivially reveal the key stream if the plain text can be known. You just XOR what you know the person talked about. And, and, we, and we've encountered and, and talked about various uh, attacks through the years on this podcast against simple XORing of stream ciphers. 
These guys clearly state that the only way for this to be fixed is for all of our existing cell system infrastructure hardware to be upgraded at the smartphone and the cell tower level. And we all know that's never going to happen. Um, they are hoping that there might still be time to head off implementation of 5G, which repeats these mistakes, but they acknowledge it's unlikely. So what it means to us is that, that application level services like iMessage and Signal, uh, WhatsApp for that matter, which provide their own application level encryption and secure management, they're secure against this for you know their own end-to-end -end encryption. They don't rely upon the, the integrity of the underlying channel. <clears throat> but HTTPS is less certain because there we're relying on, just for standard web browsing, we are relying upon some aspects of the integrity of the underlying network. We're, we're assuming that DNS is giving us the right IP and that we're actually connecting to the machine at that IP that we think we are and that, this, that, that its certificate has not been spoofed. So we're trusting its certificate. We know that certificates can be obtained by uh, presumably by state level actors on a whim, um, they still have the problem of getting us to a spoofed server using a spoofed certificate. DNS and IP switching integrity is what we rely on. That's what this system is able to subvert. So this is this could be the component of a targeted attack by a state level actor against specific individuals in specific settings. The good news is it's not deployable at scale over the internet. This requires physical man in the middle proximity uh, and it is a sophisticated attack so it would only be targeted and it needs multiple layers uh, in order to redirect web traffic. Uh, I would I'm pretty sure that without a lot more work, the higher level encryption protocols uh, that, that, that are providing end-to-end -end encryption through multiple strong endpoint encryption, in other words, iMessage and Signal and WhatsApp and so forth, you know, that, those, those guys, they're probably safe. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a, now a, a new attack revealed today and... Uh, you know, we're going to be using 4G LTE for a long time. Again, most of us had nothing to worry about. The use of strong messaging keeps us safe. Um, but it would subject standard web communications to uh, an attack by a state-level actor who was able to put all the pieces in place, and there are many of them, uh, but they would be able to pull off site spoofing uh, in, a, in a way that was undetectable. Well, except by Chrome, actually, because I don't think you can spoof. Well, maybe have to think about whether you could spoof. I don't think you could spoof the the serial number on the certificate. So uh, it would uh, still be lim uh, be limited depending upon uh, what sites were being visited. Uh, it would only be it would only Chrome could only detect it if you were going to Google properties and then where it knows that the what the certificate. Uh, is uh, has been pinned for uh, in Google, but still, uh, you know, th this suggests that we're unable to completely take the uh, the connections we have to our to our cellular providers uh, as secure by default. So, yeah.